Hey, sis. I'm excited about today's episode because I'm going to be talking to you about my first fail launch in the five lessons that I learned. And I'm hoping that you can take away from this testimony. Now, this testimony is really important to me because after my first fail launch, I honestly decided not to pursue the business anymore. Ultimately, put in my assignment on hold because I was so scarred and I don't want that for you. So I'm hoping that this podcast episode can shed some light, give you some insight on how I was able to bounce back and some lessons that can help you to keep moving forward. Let's get to it. You are listening to Call Heart Profitable, the podcast where we blend faith, business, and personal development. I'm your host, Odeja, founder of the Woman of Power Group and certified life and business coach. And on this podcast, we'll explore partnering with God in your entrepreneurial endeavors, uncover your God-given gifts so you can start and grow a business that flows, transform your mindset, and walk confidently in your calling. So grab your journal, sis, that Bible, and your favorite iced coffee as we embark on this journey together. Let's get started. Hey, sis. I'm excited about today's episode because we're going to be talking about my first failed launch and the lessons that I learned from it. Now, this episode is really important to me because when I launched my first business or my first program and it failed, it really left a scar inside of my heart for a very long time. I actually stopped pursuing the business and I had to go through a journey of healing in order to get back to a place where I was confident and I was comfortable comfortable to continue on the path of building a business that honor God with God. So back in 2020, God had prompted me to start this prayer line. At this point, I was very public about my faith. I had been walking with Jesus for about two years, and I was on Instagram preaching the gospel, teaching them the gospel, encouraging people in the faith. So a lot of people knew me to be the Jesus girl or the girl who was really strong and radical in her relationship with God. And I had built um, friendships online with a lot of these people who also were seeking after the heart of God. So one day I was in my aunt's basement and at this point I still didn't have a business. I had quit my job not too long ago and I was trying to figure out what God wanted me to do. So he put on my spirit to start a prayer line and he gave me specific names to start this prayer line with and it was 12 women. So I reached out to these 12 women and I was like, hey, do you guys want to join me on a prayer line on Monday at 12 p.m.? They said yes. And that's what we did. So we were on the prayer line every Monday at 12 p.m. And then it began to grow. So they started telling their friends and their friends started telling their other friends. And before I know it, we had about 30 women on a prayer line. Now, I also recognized that we needed a community so that we can stay connected. So what I did was I decided to create this iPhone group chat called Women of Power. And all of us was inside of this iPhone group chat. And in the iPhone group chat, we basically would encourage each other in the Lord. We would drop the link to the prayer line and all that good stuff. I felt God leading me to forgive more. Like he wanted me to really disciple these women and help them to dive deeper in the word. So what I would do was I would create these different devotionals and resources and I would drop it inside of the community so that they can continue to grow in the Lord and have more than just a prayer line once a week. And I kept feeling this tug on my spirit that God wanted more, like he wanted us to do a deeper dive. And I didn't quite know what more did he want me to do. What ended up happening was one day we were all in our 
community, which was the iPhone group chat, and somebody had dropped a video inside of the group community, and it was a video of her singing. The problem was not that the song that she was singing was bad, but it didn't have anything to do with Jesus. And when I heard the song, I felt Holy Spirit rising up inside of me, letting me know that it was my responsibility to cultivate a safe environment, a a place where women of God can come and talk about God. This was a community focusing on building your relationship with God, encouraging each other in the word, staying rooted in and committed to Christ and not anything else. Now, at the time of this situation, iPhone didn't have that feature where you can edit messages or delete messages. So that video was permanently inside of the community. And I also wind up having to reach out to her to let her know like, hey, this is not what this space is for. This space is specifically for God. Anything that has to do with the word of God and encouraging one another inside of the faith, this is what this community is for. And I made sure to let everybody else know inside of the group chat exactly what the expectation was of this community. And it turned into like a back and forth within the community. And I wound up having to remove her. The relationship since then has been restored, but this situation taught me a lot because as I mentioned, I felt like God wanted me to dive deeper with these ladies. I was already putting together resources and tools in the form of like PDFs and eBooks to help them with their walk with Christ, but I knew that we needed more. And after that situation, I realized that the iPhone group chat was not a good tool for us because it was hard for me to regulate the content. It was hard for me to really be able to cultivate a space, a safe space for other women inside of their walk, being that everyone was in different places inside of their walk. And I knew that, again, it was my responsibility to cultivate a space where these women felt comfortable, confident, and had the tools and the resources to continue on in their journey with God. Fast forward, I took the leap of faith and I moved to Wisconsin. Now, that's a testimony in itself. I'll talk about that in a later podcast episode, but I wound up taking a leap of faith. I moved to Wisconsin and I felt that God was calling me to do a deeper dive with these women. When I tell y'all that I was on the prayer line every Monday at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I was showing up faithfully. Whether one person or all 30 of them came, I was there. I remember when I was on my way to Wisconsin in the airport, it hit 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I went off to the side of the airport to start this prayer call before my flight. Like, that's how serious and committed I was to this prayer line. Now I'm in Wisconsin and I felt God again tugging on me to dive deeper with these ladies. I knew that I needed a community space. I knew that I needed to dive deeper when it came to the things of God so that they can really grow and develop in their walk. I didn't quite know how I was going to do it, but God had placed on my heart to connect with this business coach. So I was been following this one particular business coach for a while. And I really liked her content and God had placed on my heart to hire her as my coach for the Woman of Power group. Now, this was the first time that I had ever hired a coach. I did not know anybody in my sphere of influence who had a business coach before, let alone was about to spend thousands of dollars for a business coach. Now, this is in 2020 when them stimulus checks were hitting. However, I had just moved. I didn't have a job. I had a rent to pay for the first time that was $1,500. And I had saved $1,500 for my next month rent. And I felt a tugging in my heart to use that $1,500 to cultivate this new space for the Woman of Power group. So after much praying and fasting, I knew that God wanted me to take the leap of faith and use that $1,500 and hire this business coach. And that's what I did. So I hired the business coach and me and her worked four weeks straight on coming up with a community in a safe space for these women to come and grow in their faith. I spent time 
money, energy. I mean, I was praying. I was fasting. I was doing all the things to make sure that this new and approved community was going to be exactly what it is that these ladies needed. I also was prepping them along the way. So we were still inside of the iPhone group chat. And I basically was just like, hey, y'all, I'm really excited about this community. I can't wait to let you guys know what God is doing and how he is shifting and all of the great content and things that we're going to be learning. I mean, I had a, a, a six month itinerary planned out for us. And when I tell y'all, I took my time with this. I took my time with this. This is what, for those four weeks, is what I devoted myself and my time to. And I was very thorough. Even a few weeks ago, I had went back and I seen the landing page from that time and even the course material. I'm like, dang, this is really good. So here's where things started to shift. So I really spent time putting together this community space. I had all of this content planned out for us. I knew exactly how we were going to flow. I had dipped all of the copies. So I wrote out this complete landing page. I did all the FAQs and I wrote out all of this email content to do email marketing. Launch day. Before launch day, I was up until like 5 a.m. that morning, really putting together, making sure all the last finishing touches were like perfect for, for it to launch. So I set up all of the email marketing and I was ready to go. I sent the email out. I reached out to the ladies inside of the group chat and I'm like, hey, y'all, it's time. I'm excited. Check your emails. Here is all of the goodies that we are going to start with. It was crooked. And then came the backlash. So the program that I had put together, we were moving over to a legit community space that had a monthly requirement. So I had set the community now at a monthly price because we would need to maintain the community. Not only that, I had so many ideas for the community. So with the monthly subscription, I also was going to purchase different books and courses and journals and merchandise for the ladies. Like each month, they were going to have something sent to their home so that they felt encouraged and empowered. When I launched the business, when I launched the community, for the first hour, it was crickets. And then all of the backlash started. I got phone calls from the same women that I had poured into for a year now, my heart, my time, my energy into them, really helping them grow in their walk with God. Many of them can attest that I have helped them grow in their relationship with God. I had received so much backlash. Many of them were saying, how can you charge for Jesus? I got hit with It's a sin to try to charge for this community. I got hit with, you didn't hear right from God. I got hit with scriptures trying to prove the fact that I shouldn't have done this with the community. And I got hit with, my landing page was too long and too wordy and they didn't get it and they didn't understand why we were shifting in this direction and God didn't tell me to do this. It was a lot. And I felt so broken and betrayed because on the back end, I knew God called me to do this. I knew he asked me to do this. I knew that he had prompted me to invest the $1,500 that I have saved for my rent into developing this business. I knew that he was asking me to put a cost on this community because there was going to be a lot of resources that was going to be flowing for this community. Like I knew that this is what God was asking me to do, but I just couldn't understand why I was being met with so much backlash. I also did was not expecting All of the hurtful words that I received from the same women that I had poured into time and time again for the year. I even reached out to my mentor at the time and he basically 
was like, maybe you charge too much. Why did you charge? Like all of these things. And I was confused because I was not expecting that response. Like I, I put a lot of time and energy into this group a year before and a lot of time and, and energy into this group now so that we can evolve. And I just was not expecting this response. Now, one person actually wind up paying and joining, but because I received so much backlash from everybody else, I wound up not moving forward with the community. What I ended up doing was about two weeks later, I reached back out to everyone and I offered the community for free. I first started with an onboarding. So I decided to do a open house kind of thing to show them the community and let them know exactly what I had planned for us. And even the, and on the open house, I was met with already backlash. Like I was hit with, so you want me to pay for Jesus when I can find Jesus at church? I was hit with, you want me to pick between Jesus and putting gas in my car? Like I was hit with so many crazy things and I was just like, oh my gosh, I didn't want to lose them. So about two weeks later, I decided to offer the community completely free, which was not what God had asked me to do. And they still did not join. And I could not understand the one woman who joined, I wound up refunding her back her money. And I completely walked away from the woman of power group. I decided to pursue a whole different business and I shut it down what I thought was for good. It's crazy even telling this story because I can just feel me in that situation all over again. I can just feel my heart grieving for myself in that season. It was really hard because like I said, I really invested a lot of time. I even invested the last of my money pouring into this community because I knew that this was what God was asking me to do. And I was met with so much backlash. Fast forward. So I put the woman of power group down all together. And I was just like, I, I don't know, like, if you want me to do this again, God, you're going to have to do it through me and for me. And I'm I'm kind of just over it. I'm, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm hurt. I'm bitter. I'm over it. Fast forward a year later, God had put on my heart to do this challenge. So this was going to be the bounce back of the Woman of Power group. I didn't know that this was going to be the bounce back, but this ended up being the bounce back. So he put on my heart to do a challenge called 30 Days of Believing Bigger. And it was around this devotional that I have called 100 Days of Believing Bigger by Marshawn Evans. And the challenge was a hit. We did 30 days of praying. We read the devotional. It was $30 to join the challenge and it worked out. And that was like the redemption of the Woman of Power group. And I honestly could not believe it because I promise you, I was so done with the lady in a group. I was so done with the Woman of Power group. I did not ever believe that I was going to pick it back up. And it's very interesting too, because the 30 day Be Believe in Bigger challenge came a little bit after I had got laid off the first time that year. And ever since that challenge, we have been doing quarterly challenge since. So what are some of the lessons that I learned from this time that I want you to take away from this testimony? Lesson number one is it's important to know who your offering is for, understand their needs and the value you are bringing to the table. This has everything to do with target audience, your niche and your bias persona. I didn't do any of these groundwork before I created the first Woman of Power group community. I just knew that these were ladies who was interested in their relationship with God, but I didn't really take the time to really understand their needs. I didn't take the time to understand their capacity financially before I put a price tag on it. I also didn't understand what their value were. And I also didn't understand what the value that I brought to the table. I knew that I had helped so many of them start their relationship with God, but I truly didn't understand the value of it. It wasn't just that they started their relationship with God. It was that they were being delivered from bondage. It was being that their life was being transformed. It was being that their mindset grew. That was the value that I presented 
presented to them by helping them build a relationship with God. But because I didn't know the value, I was easily swayed by the opinions of people when I decided to launch a program that was going to help other people get to the next level. So for you, it's important for you to know exactly the value that you bring to the table, but also who this value is for. I remember one of my mentors, I had asked her about a coaching program that I'm developing and I asked her, hey, what do you think about this length at this price point? And she said to me, she said, can the person that you are offering this to afford it? And I was like, I don't know. And she said, well, that's going to tell you. You have to think about the people that you're called to serve. I know that you want to put a price tag on it because of the value, but you also want to be able to connect with the people who's going to be able to pay for what it is that you're offering. And that all goes back to understanding who they are, understanding what their buyer habits are, understanding what their values are, but also understanding what value you bring to the table and not just monetary value, but transformational value. Lesson number two, I want you to take away from this testimony is that there's a time and season for everything. God had me serving that group of women in that capacity for that season, but the season was up and shifted and I had to be okay with that. In every season, it's important for us to be faithful over the little. There was someone who found value in what I was offering. Even though it was one person, it was my responsibility to understand that she was the person that I was supposed to help in that season And it's okay if all 29 other ladies didn't want to join. I was supposed to help someone like her. My time had ended with helping these women in that capacity, and I had to be okay with that. So it's important to know that there's times and seasons in everything. God may have you over here helping these group of people with this, and then he may shift you over to helping these group of people with something totally different. And it's important for you to be able to shift with the times in the seasons. Lesson number three that I learned from my first fail launch is always follow the voice of God and not the masses. God gave you the vision. He gave you the instructions. He didn't give it to them. So it's your responsibility to follow through no matter what. I stopped the woman of power group completely because of all of the backlash that I have received from women who God never told them the vision. It was always my responsibility to follow through whether they were on board or not. This makes me think of the story with Samuel and Saul. When God told King Saul to go after the Amalekites and kill everything. Instead of killing everything, he left the spoils to quote unquote sacrifice it to God. In 1 Samuel chapter 15 verse 24, he goes on to say, I have sinned. I violated the Lord's command and your instructions. I was afraid of the men and so I gave in to them. And that caused King Saul the kingdom. It's so important for us to always follow the voice of God and not the masses of other because God is going to be looking at you and he's going to be looking for your obedience and not following his instructions can cost you the kingdom. For me, it cost me precious time. I should be farther along in my business than I am right now had I not listened to the masses. Lesson number four that I want you to take away from my first failed launch is some events or situations is for God to build resilience and long suffering in you, not necessarily for whatever you expect the outcome to be. So of course, I expected the outcome to be, yay, all of these ladies are excited. They're, they 
rush into the community, that I have all the resources and all that good stuff. But that's not what happened. However, I realized that it was really to build my character. It was really to prune me in business. Had the situation with the group iPhone had not happened, I wouldn't have even thought that we needed to be in a space where content needed to be regulated. Had the failed launch not happened, I would have not known to take charge of what God has given me. This situation also stretched me as an investor in my business. It helped me to build character. It helped me to build long suffering. It helped me to build resilience. So now when I have another failed launch, which I'm pretty sure is going to happen because not every idea goes as planned. I have the long suffering. I have the resume that I need from that failed launch to keep pushing forward, to keep moving. It taught me to really understand what the needs are for the people that I'm called to serve. It helped me to also understand and realize that there's a time and season for everything. So some events or situation is not necessarily for whatever expected outcome you want it to be, but for God to build resilience in a character inside of you. And lesson number five that I want you to take away from my first failed launch is as a business owner or an idea holder or a vessel of God, God gives you the idea, but it's your responsibility to develop it. Now, I thought that when God gave me this idea, it was automatically going to be successful because he gave it to me. I honestly did not know that I would have to take time to really understand how to put this out there on the market. I didn't know that I was going to have to take time to really grow the scale of marketing, of sales, of community building, of leadership, of being a good steward over a business. God gave me the idea, but it was my responsibility to develop it. And when I launched the first time, that was a first phase of development. That wasn't the last phase. It wasn't going to be a launch and done. There was, There's still more growing that had to happen within me and within the business. And it's the same thing for you. God gives you the idea, but it's your responsibility to develop it, to develop the gift, to develop the talent, to develop whatever it is that God has given you with him. Now, I know that I said five, but there's three more lessons that I believe is really important that you can take away from my first failed launch. So the next lesson is you are the gatekeeper of what God has given you. It's your responsibility to steward over it well and make sure that it is in alignment with what God has shown you. Thinking back to the beginning of my story when I said that the woman dropped a video of her singing, it did not align with what God had for the community group. And though it was hard, again, it was my responsibility. I'm going to be the one that has to answer to God. He gave it to me to steward over. And it's the same thing for you. So you are the gatekeeper of that idea, that business, that calling, whatever assignment that God has given you. Also, things take time. So you might not get it the first or the fifth time around, but if you're consistent and persistent, you will eventually get it. And then the last thing is there's a difference between business and a ministry. I'm going to say it again. There's a difference between a business and a ministry. You can have a business that has a ministry feature like praying or discipleship or Bible reading. However, in business, you are providing a service or product to solve a problem and you are getting paid for it. If you are a faith-based service provider, people are not paying for Jesus. They are paying for your unique strategy that will get them to their desired results. So don't get caught in a trap like I did that people are paying for Jesus because you are faith-based. They are not. They're paying for strategy to get them to their desired results. So that is what happened. There's so much more detail that I could talk about when it came to that first failed launch, but this podcast episode would be extremely too long if I spoke about it. My ultimate prayer is that this testimony encouraged you to let you know that if you have put something out there in the world and it did not go as planned, you are not alone. God is not finished with you. He's not done with that idea. There may just need some pruning. You may just need to keep moving forward. And in every failed attempt, 
there's always a lesson to be learned. So as always, sis, I hope that this testimony was encouraging to you. I hope that you found value in it. If you did, please share this with a friend. Let them know that you are thinking of them. Let them know that they are seen and heard by our Father God. Let them know that Philippians chapter 1 verse 6, he will complete whatever it is that he has started inside of you. So keep going and keep pushing, sis. I love you and I see you in the next episode. Hey, sis. Thanks for tuning in. If you found any value in today's episode, I'd love to hear from you. Please take a moment to leave a review and share the podcast with a friend. Together, we can empower more women to work boldly in their faith and business. Until next time, stay profitable.